uh, I'm really proud uh, to uh, have uh, Sister Margaret Kimberly come forward. She, uh, yeah. <laughs> She, she's based uh, in New York City, and she's editor and senior columnist for Black Agenda Report. Uh, her column, Freedom Rider, Rider has been uh, featured uh, in The Commentator as well. But um, I was in Russia uh, sometime, was it last year? Last year. And uh, uh, when I got there, I, I saw that the uh, Black is Black Coalition had preceded me. I picked up a... Uh, a newspaper written in Russia, uh, Russian, and the uh, only thing I could see was understand about it was the picture, which was Margaret Kimberly and Black is Back, you, you know, uh, who, had, who had preceded me uh, to Moscow. And that was a really important uh, move. It was important for her to be there. It was important for the coalition to have been uh, to Moscow because uh, Russia has its own beef with the United States. Anybody who watches, uh, keeps up with the news, recognize that. And uh, it has uh, facilitated uh, uh, national, international conferences for people who are struggling for self-determination. And Margaret uh, was there, and I was there on two different occasions working with that. And this is part of why I think, again, this coalition is so important, because the critical issue that we have to reintroduce into the political life, uh, the political narrative uh, for our people is the question of self-determination. That's the fundamental question that's not being addressed. And I think this coalition, what it does is allow for an assortment of different groups across the political spectrum uh, to raise the issue of, uh, of uh, political, of self-determination. And Margaret Kimberly just wrote a brilliant piece uh, uh, on uh, Bernard Sanders. I guess his name is Bernard. I don't feel like I know him well enough to call him Bernie. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm really happy to hear her come and and, and give us the lowdown, if you will, on Bernard Sanders and the struggle for self-determination. Thank you. Good morning, and power to the people, and Uhuru, and praise God. Cover it all. Um, a few days ago, um, Bill Clinton made headlines by helping his wife look worse than she had already done on her own. They are a tag team, and every day, one of them volunteers to put a foot firmly in their mouth and remind everyone how awful they are. <laughs> on this particular occasion, Bill Clinton was interrupted by protesters who rightly pointed out that his 1994 crime bill vastly increased the numbers of black people behind bars. But Bill Clinton, being Bill Clinton, reacted angrily and accused the protesters of defending gang members and killers and drug dealers. And um, before this, I had already written that if he wants to help his wife, he should stay off the campaign trail altogether. But uh, he won't and keeps proving me right. But there's a bigger point to be made about the Clintons and Bernie Sanders and how black people respond to them and to the Democratic Party. And uh, I, I have to confess, I guess I'm in a church I should, but I, and other people still voted for Bill Clinton. And this was after the crime bill, after the welfare reform bill, after all of the horrible policies that he inflicted on the country and the world. I was that typical fearful black voter, and I voted for Democrats no matter what, and I was not alone. Now having awakened from that slumber, I'm proud to say that I, now I don't feel the burn and I'm not with Hillary, and I won't be voting for either one of them in November. But <clears throat> I also argue that voting for Clinton isn't any worse than voting for Barack Obama. And I'm here to, stay, to say that we must stop this losing proposition altogether. We have to stop voting for the Democrats. And that, That will be the first step towards liberation and self-determination for black people. When, when Bernie Sanders began the election season with a draw in Iowa and a victory in New Hampshire, the foolishness that substitutes for black politics today came out into the open in all of its awful glory. 
It was just ridiculous. First, there was a photo from 50 years ago showing a white man at a protest. And, and there was this whole thing. Was it Bernie Sanders? Was it not Bernie Sanders? And he wasn't the one in that particular photo. And, but there was a photo of him at another rally. It really was him. And yes, he was active with CORE in Chicago. And Hillary's family were Republicans. And she was a Goldwater girl. And this information may be interesting to some people. But it, frankly, there's nothing there. It's not unusual for people of their age to have been in marches or to have been raised by Republicans but become a Democrat. The real issue is whether, what does any of this have to do with black people? <laughs> and at this moment, the Congressional Black Caucus was true to form. And they, as for the reasons that Glenn just uh, stated, they stuck with Hillary Clinton and they got their political action committee to endorse her. Now that is their arm which lobbies with big pharma and cigarette makers, but it's a distinction without a difference. The endorsement gave the appearance of CBC members endorsing Clinton and they didn't disappoint. Charles Rangel, whose district we're now in, said that he didn't know any black people who knew Bernie Sanders. John Lewis, who gets a lot of mileage out of being called a civil rights icon, said he didn't know Bernie Sanders from back in the day, but he did know Bill and Hillary, except not really at that moment, but he did meet them later on. Then, of course, Al Sharpton, when he senses somebody else might be president, he re rears his ugly head, and he had lunch with Sanders at Sylvia's, and, but he looked a, Sanders looked a little uncomfortable being in Al's embrace, and he ought to. But all of this is part of uh, the hoax that we go through every four years, the hoax of the presidential election. And I call it a hoax because it gives an illusion that the U.S. is a democracy and that the people have a voice but we know that it is no such thing because we never get what we want from the political system. And the second part of that hoax concerns black people in particular. We live in fear of many things that are not issues for other people. We're afraid of the police, afraid of losing our jobs, and we'll hear later today, we're afraid of being kicked out of our homes by gentrification. But when election years come around, we are most afraid as, of Republicans, as Glenn Ford just described them, the white people's party. And we have reason to be fearful, but feeling as if we have no recourse other than to continue in allegiance to the Democrats when they do us no good is certainly no answer to our problems. This year we have an interesting situation with the rise of Bernie Sanders. One candidate was declared the uh, front runner because of fundraising prowess and name recognition and a seeming certainty of victory. And of course I mean Hillary Clinton. And that perceived front-runner status made her a favorite among the always anxious black voter. But Hillary being Hillary, she wore out her welcome as soon as the campaign season began. Her high-handedness, her tone deafness, and the history of her own and her husband's corruption made discerning voters think twice and take a look at Bernie Sanders. Now Sanders has called himself a socialist, now he refers to himself as a social democrat, but he stated for the record that he's not in favor of public ownership of the means of production, so he isn't a socialist at all. Yeah. He's just a democrat. <laughs> but the party has moved so far to the right over the years that anyone sounding like most democrats sounded 40 or 50 years ago yeah. uh, gets, is able to call themselves a leftist even when they're no such thing. Now Hillary Clinton is leading in the delegate count mostly because of overwhelming victory in the southern states. There are few, if any, white Democrats in the South, so that means black voters stuck with the status quo. Sanders supporters then proceeded to ask what was wrong with those crazy black people, don't they love Bernie like they do? But it's the wrong question to ask if we're interested in self-determination. The bigger issue is why we're still allowing ourselves to be herded like sheep into the arms of the Democrats again. We have so little to show for being the most loyal constituency in they, that they have. And that question should be our emphasis, not trying to figure out if Bernie is better than Hillary. In any case, saying that he is, is damning with faint praise and leading down the path of the impossible, which is to try to find a better democratic politician. Yeah. But uh, the Sanders phenomenon is useful in that it lays bare the hollowness of what pauses for the left in the United States. Wow. Even people who had supposedly staked out a position on the left are showing their true fair weather colors. Wow. The New York primary is going to be held in a couple of weeks and I, I noticed something interesting happening. New York has a closed primary and that means only registered Democrats can vote for Hillary or Bernie. 
And as that deadline approached, I began to see that people who were registered as Green Party members were publicly stating they were going to change their affiliation to the Democrats in order to vote for Bernie. Now, if you're registered as a Green, why do you want to vote for a Democrat at all? And you do that because you aren't really a Green. You're just a disaffected Democrat who lives in hope that somewhere, somehow, someone more likable is going to show up. So Bernie Shan Sanders is their dream guy. So Sanders supporters are people who have for a long time been disaffected from the de Democrats. And now there, there is a crisis because many of them say they won't support Hillary if she gets the nomination. And some of them say we need a third party. But if they believed in that, uh, there are already third and fourth and fifth and sixth parties in the country that people in most states can vote for. You can vote for the Greens or the Communists or the Social Worker Party or you could help build one of those parties. You could talk about the National Black Independent Party that existed some 30 years ago. But uh, it just shows you uh, that people aren't really interested in, in change at all. And it's interesting to see how even people who are worthy of respect show that they too are afraid. They're afraid of change, or they don't want to put themselves on the line, or they're in denial about the nature of the Democrats, or they were just phonies and hypocrites all along. And I don't know which of these categories people like Angela Davis belong in, but she and other people have uh, been, uh, for, ever since the rise of Obama, making bizarre, foolish statements about him. And her dissent began when she, she ruined her good name by endorsing him in 2008. But she didn't just say she supported him. In 2010, for example, she made a strange claim that she, he hadn't raised a lot of money. She said he was elected despite the power of money. Now, she's a smart woman, so she must know that he raised four times as much as John McCain did in 2008. But uh, having had that embarrassing experience, she and others uh, now claim they're not in the endorsing business anymore. And this is what she said a couple of weeks ago, quote, endorsing, I don't endorse. <laughs> But let me say, to be frank, I've never voted for one of the major parties well, until Barack Obama. I believe in independent politics. I think we need a new party, a party that is grounded in labor, a party that can speak to all of the issues around racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, and what is happening in the world. We don't have that party yet, end quote. Well, as I said, we do have such parties. What are Davis and other people waiting for? Do they think someone's going to bestow a party on them? Or do they really not believe anything they say? And the truth is they'll never leave the Democrats because they don't want to. Yeah. They hope to see some kind of change somewhere, but nothing outside of the bounds of what they think is acceptable. And they don't want to put themselves on the line. Davis may have declined to endorse Sanders, but that silly doublespeak is emblematic of the Sanders phenomenon and why so many people are attracted to him. Sanders is the Obama of 2016. He has pulled off quite a marketing coup. He isn't a socialist, but markets himself as a socialist to people who also are not socialists, but they feel better thinking of themselves that way. So everyone is in on the big lie. The Sanders campaign website asked the question, are you ready to start a political revolution? Sanders is marketing the word revolution the same way he's marketing the word socialist. Revolution has different meanings, but voting for Democrats doesn't meet that definition by any standard anywhere. We know what revolutions look like. America had a revolution. It was a counterinsurgency to make sure that slavery would be safe should the British choose to end it. It was a reactionary revolution, but it was certainly a fundamental systemic change. Russia had a revolution, China had a revolution, Cuba had a re revolution, Grenada attempted one. Ukraine had a right-wing revolution a couple of years ago, but you get the idea. There's nothing about voting for a liberalish Democrat that fits anyone's definition of a revolution. But you need not be involved in a struggle of those dimensions in order to be a revolutionary. It would be revolutionary to campaign against the Democratic Party or to work for a social movement that is not aligned with a political campaign. It would be revolutionary to keep campaigning against the current president, even though he has only nine months left in office. Yes. Now, Barack Obama raises another problem with the Bernie-loving Hillary haters group. They <laughs> rightly revile the Clintons about mass incarceration, welfare reform, killing Muammar Gaddafi, and any number of crimes, but none of them will raise their voice against Barack Obama. Right who is just as culpable as Hillary and Bill. Yeah. 
Obama could have freed thousands of black people yeah. imprisoned by the Clinton era draconian drug sentencing laws, but he chose not to. The Fair Sentencing Act reduced the crack powder cocaine disparity which put so many black people away for sometimes decades in prison. But it did nothing for those sentenced before its passage. Yeah. Those people have no right to even request resentencing in part because the Obama Justice Department filed court briefs against doing just that. Estimates vary, but Obama could have freed anywhere between 5,000 and 8,000 black people in one fell swoop. And having said that, I'm not going to hold my breath waiting for Black Lives Matter to take him on publicly or privately either. Why doesn't anyone protest when Obama speaks? He has contributed to the Clinton era criminality and he has done so without facing any of the hostility directed at the Clintons. It is true that as Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton made war against Libya, killed its president, and then laughed about it on camera. But she worked for Barack Obama when the crime was carried out. She had his approval every step of the way. She pressured the Haitian government to lower the minimum wage from 62 cents to 30 cents an hour, but again her boss gave the go-ahead. She and Obama claimed the right to carry out extrajudicial killings, even of Americans, and they killed Anwar al and his teenage son. And if that doesn't merit protest, I don't know what does. So now Sanders is the flavor of the month for liberals, and he has become so with little assist from black voters. So the blame game has begun in earnest for all those, by all those feeling the burn. What's wrong with black people? Don't they see he's wonderful? Hmm. Hmm. So uh, black people shouldn't be voting for Hillary Clinton, but they shouldn't vote for Bernie either. He also makes appeals to the black community, as Glenn says, appearing as the more inclusive party when they're not. He knows how to seize on black people's concerns. His, we now have this phenomenon of the families of uh, uh, black lynching victims endorsing this one or that one. Yeah. Um, his campaign produced a video featuring Erica Garner, the daughter of the man whose murder we witnessed on television as he pleaded that he could not breathe. Yeah. Now, Ms. Garner is free to endorse him if she wants, but I don't see any evidence that killer police have any reason to fear a Sanders presidency. On his website, he says that, you know, the nonsense. Communities don't trust the police, law enforcement is disconnected. Uh, this is unacceptable. And then he says, we need a societal transformation to make it clear that black lives matter and racism will not be accepted. We don't need a societal transformation to end police brutality. We need a president who will use the power of the office to prosecute killer cops. But all he does is repeat trite phrases, phrases when he should be saying that he will empower the Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department to bring justice. And he had this laundry list of trivialities, demilitarize the police, invest in community policing, increase civilian oversight, whatever that means, create a culture where the good cops can report on the bad cops, police forces should be diverse, a model training program, uh, count how many people the police kill every year. But this can best be summed up as blah, blah, and blah. And this is the person that people are trying to see as some sort of a savior. So in effect, Sanders is Clinton and Obama all over again. Yes, Hillary Clinton made a groveling and bloodthirsty speech before the pro-Israel lobby at the AIPAC convention, while Sanders is more of a mealy-mouthed Zionist. Yeah. But he also says when asked, drones are OK, just don't use them so much. But he also said Hugo Chavez was a dead communist dictator, the only true uh, thing in that statement is Chavez is dead, but he wasn't a communist, he wasn't a dictator. Yeah. He says Vladimir Putin has to be contained when it's the United States that has to be contained. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of this love for Sanders is an attempt to assuage guilt from supporting Clinton and Obama. After having destroyed, Obama was interviewed in the Atlantic magazine, the Obama Doctrine, and has his face on the cover looking, you know, like a model or something. Yeah. And, um, and he said after destroying Libya, we, with the help of jihadists like ISIS, we're now told are the enemy, he blames Britain and France for the whole mess. There certainly is no honor among thieves. And in this interview, it's said that he privately refers to Libya as the shitstorm. Like, it's got nothing to do with him. Somebody just messed up yeah. somewhere. But where is the outrage? Why nickname Hillary as Killary, but not find a pithy name for the killer Barack Obama? Bill and Hillary are so easy to hate. 
but it isn't easy to explain why he was elected and re-elected with so much enthusiasm for black people. His racist statements and hers are, are no worse than Obama's. Obama used dog whistle politics and talked over black people's heads straight to white people. There's no reason to hate her for the same behavior exhibited by him. But his, Clinton's ability to get away with putting black people in jail or ending what was once a 60-year right to public assistance has to be examined. How did most of us say nothing or even applaud these actions? The truth is that black people led by the misleaders also revel in respectability politics and were eager to join white people in beating up the poor and with disastrous consequences. It's easy to point fingers now, but it is much easier to call names at the Clinton and then to ask why they succeeded with so little opposition from black people. Mm -hmm. It's easier to say feel the burn than to ask why accommodation and self-hatred were the order of the day and black people in jail or on public assistance were so readily despised by so many of us. But we're propagandized about a lot of things and we're propagandized into voting and dissuaded from doing anything else. Black people in particular are taught to worship the act of voting and not to respect the movement politics which accomplished so much. What are we told every five, four years? We're reminded that people died so we might have the right to vote. Yes, people died in the struggle against America's apartheid when it included the right to the franchise, but I don't think they died so that we could fall for the same foolishness every four years. They died for our freedom and for our citizenship rights. So as, as Glenn Plus pointed out, there's nothing wa wrong with watching the two parties fall apart. In fact, there's a lot of reason to be happy. Trump's campaign may lead to an end of the Republicans at, as we know them. Hillary could provide more of the same unless the Saunders people make good in their pledge to both the party if she wins the nomination, but I'm doubtful about their willingness to fight. Their opposition to her has taken on cartoonist overtones. In Arizona recently, uh, Arizona uh, cut 70% of its polling places, and as intended, the result was chaos on primary day. But Arizona was one of those states that had to get permission from the Justice Department to yeah. make any election changes. Yeah. But the Supreme Court gutted the Voting Rights Act, and which ended that requirement. Did the Sanders people talk about the Supreme Court wow. and how their guy would change it? No. Did they talk about making voting a constitutional right? No. They said somehow Hillary Clinton was behind it all, even though Arizona's a red state. But, <laughs> but that's about as much as they uh, uh, amount to. So in closing, I'm getting a, a, a sign. So early in the campaign season, our Black Agenda Report editor Bruce Dixon called Bernie Sanders a sheepdog, and he predicted that he would play the role of other liberals in presidential campaign. They create an excitement for the purpose of keeping progressives in the party, because in, but in the end, they always endorse the nominee. And Bruce and the rest of Barr took some heat for that, and people were offended, and how dare we say such a thing. But just two days ago, Sanders was asked if he'll endorse Clinton if she wins the nomination. And he said, sure, I will. <laughs> uh, look, as I've said a million times, I think the idea of a Trump or a Cruz presidency would be a disaster. I'll do everything in my power and work as hard as I can to make sure that doesn't happen. And if she's a nominee, I'll support her. So there you have it. <laughs> Democrat after Democrat, demeaning, insulting, imprisoning black people, none of them willing to fight on our behalf, and we pay the price in continuing down the same old rabbit hole time and time again. So at closing, I'll just say this. There is no self-determination with Bernie Sanders or anyone else in the quadrennial duopoly sham. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.